Hi, George here. And Affinity Photo 2 version 2.6 just came out. Let's take a look at the most important new features. We'll first have to install this. You should see this pop up when you open up Affinity Photo. Click on Install. Let this go ahead and install. Now, at this point in the install, they ask you if you want to help them collect data to improve Affinity. I always say no on these things. And let's see what's new. That only took about 35 seconds. So it's very, very fast. And if you click on that What's New link, it takes you right here and walks you through what's new. Now, when you get here, you'll see in these drop downs, upper left hand corner, it shows you which program it's for. This is for Affinity Photo. That's that kind of a purplish icon. We'll look at that in just a second. Select Subject again, that's a purple icon. Multi page spreads. This one is for Affinity Publisher. So when you get this list, most of these are actually over in Affinity Publisher but there are some very big improvements here for Affinity Photo. The best two are the Object Selection Tool and the Select Subject. Another big one is right down here, Color Picker Improvements. I'll show this to you. They've changed how the Color Picker works. It's a little thing, but I think it's an important thing. And of course, if you come down here, updated the Serif Labs RAW support. This is your camera RAW. And with any good update, you're gonna have the camera RAW updated, including new cameras and so forth. And you can find out the list for that right here at this link. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the top three items here. There's some small things as well, but we'll take a look at the top three. These are the important ones. And we'll start off with the object selection tool. And I'll first open up a file. And I'm gonna use this one. I've used this one in previous discussions. We can consider these as three objects of people in here if you wanna think of it that way. Now with both the object selection and the subject select, these are both using machine learning. And for that, it has to have a bit more information. And there's one more important step before we can use either of those two tools. Go up here to the edit menu, come down to settings right here. And here's a new section, machine learning. There we go. Now there are two models down here we need to download. One is segmentation. This is what's used in the object selection tool. And the second one is saliency and this is used in the select subject. So I'll go ahead and download both of these. They'll go pretty fast. Let this first one download. Okay, so install that second one. And there we go, that's done. That fast to do that and close. So we've now installed both the models, which means we can now use both of those tools. For the object selection, go over here. You see this kind of an owl thing right there? That's a new icon, new tool, click on that. This is your object selection. Notice they had kind of a clock icon there. It was figuring things out. If I now roll over an object like this, notice how it's finding that whole object. And take a look down at the shoes down below here. I'm gonna zoom in on this one. Notice that's getting almost everything, including most of the laces. That's really remarkable. So this is a phenomenal tool. Let's just recenter our picture. There we go. You get a pretty good selection over here, pretty good selection over here. Here's the sky selection, different mountain selections. Here's that rock in front. There's some different areas in behind. So it does a really nice job. Click and it's gonna be making that into a selection. Here's our selection. Now I have two modifier keys for this. One is the Alt key. Notice that's now showing me a smaller selection in here. So it gives you kind of an idea of what it's looking for. It's actually looking for values in here, values and colors to see it with the shoes. Or we can use the Shift and Alt keys for an even tighter selection. Let's just do just the shirt. Once you have your selection in here, just click on that and there's the selection. Notice I can come in here and let's just do the Alt key here and grab that jacket over there. I'll click on that. So now I have both of those selected. Let's go over here to this side, hold the Alt key down for a tighter selection. Let's do a Shift Alt for even tighter selection and click that. And I now have just the jackets selected. So real fast, real easy way to make these automated selections. Great new tool. Again, just roll over it for your regular selection. Use the Alt for a little bit of a finer selection and the Shift Alt for even a finer selection. Okay, I'll hit the Control D keyboard shortcut to back out of that and let's get off of that tool. The other new tool is the subject select and that looks for foreground subjects in your picture. Let's see how it does with these three people in here. Go up to select and select subject right there. Click on that one. Let's it figure this out. And there we go. It found all three foreground people in here that easily and made those into selections. Now it missed a little bit right over here and a little bit inside the rock there. But because it's regular selections, we can now go in. Let's just go over here. We can now get in and with our other tools, we can refine our selection. Let's say, I just want to remove this part in here. Let's go over to our marquee tools, freehand selection tool. 
Let's set this at the polygonal lasso and we're at the remove button up here, subtract. And I'll come in and just make a little selection right around in here, around the hand. And we're going to remove this part of this selection. There we go, just come right around here. And back around to the beginning again. And we've taken that part out of the selection. So both of those are great tools for speeding up the selection process. And I think I'll be using those a lot in here. Of course, when you have your selections, you can then switch over to your regular selection tools and even do things such as the refined edge in here for the hair. So all that works like it always did. We're just getting the initial selection a lot faster by using those two different tools. Okay, Control D to deselect. Let me show you something else over here. Let's go up here, upper right hand corner and I have the color panel showing up here. And this area right here, here's your color picker. This little spot right there, that's called the color well, right there. And that's the last color that I had chosen in a previous project. Now, the way this used to work is you go over here, left hand side, there's your color picker tool. You come in some place like on this girl's sweater over here, click on the sweater, it would then pick that color and put that color in the well right there. So you had that as a chosen color. If I had something in here, let's say I had a shape in here, let's put a shape like that. The shape comes in as the current foreground color. If I then clicked on that, it would then apply that color well to that shape. So there's a couple steps in there. Choose a color and then apply it to your shape, two steps. What they've done now is they've made that just one step. Let me demonstrate that. I'll just get rid of this. Let's make a new shape in here. I'll revert my colors back to their originals. There we go. Make a new shape up here. Here's our shape. Let's say I wanted to grab a red in here. So now if our shape is selected, go up here to the color picker tool. There it is. And I'll choose a red. It automatically puts that color in the color well, but it also puts that color in the shape. So it saves you a step right there. Again, very useful. Now, if you want to have the old technique, you can still do that. And I'll show you that. Let's go back here to the color picker again, or on that. I'll go up here. If you hold the Alt key down and click on a color, notice how it has changed that color without changing the object. So I can still do it the old way. Just hold the Alt key down. If you want to have it done in one step, that's the new default. Again, not always going to be used, but when it is used, I think it's a more natural way of working where you click on a color and it's going to be automatically placed into the area that you've selected for that color. We did mention that the Serif Labs RAW, what you would consider the camera RAW, has been improved with new cameras and lenses added to that, but also new improvements here inside of Affinity Photo on how RAW images work. Most things that you would normally do over here in the layers with a regular pixel layer can now be done with Camera Raw. Before this version, you'd have to go up here into the Develop Persona and do your Camera Raw over there. But now you can actually bring Camera Raw right into your project at this level, which is the Photo Persona, and do some work here in the Photo Persona. So it makes the program much more efficient that way, bringing a lot of raw stuff right into what I consider the main workspace for the program. Let's just go ahead and we'll demonstrate that. We'll go up here and we'll place a file. And here's some sample raw files that I use. We'll take this one right there and choose open. And this will then place this file right here into the photo persona. Here's our placement tool. Let's just click in here someplace. There we go. And as you can see, the camera raw file came in here as a layer in our project right inside and we're still in the photo persona. Let me just find the edge in here. Let's bring our image size down a bit. Obviously the camera raw image is a much larger image. You can see how I'm working with this image, the camera raw image right here in the photo persona, right there, added it right in, this resizing right here in our regular project on its own layer. So we couldn't do that before, we now have that ability. Other things as well will work in here, masking will work in here on this thing. If I come in here with a paintbrush, let's make sure we're on this layer, here's a paintbrush. And I'll paint in here. Now what used to happen is this would have to have been converted to a pixel layer before I could paint on it. But now we actually can paint right onto the layer, kind of. In reality, if you look over here, right hand side, what we have now is another sub layer in front of a pixel layer in front of the camera raw, but it gives us the same effect, basically painting on that camera raw layer right there. So again, something which you couldn't do before and the camera raw has now been integrated into the regular photo persona. 
Now, it doesn't mean that you can't go over into the develop persona and do all the fancy raw stuff over there. That's still all available. But if you're using the camera raw as just part of your image, part of a project, you can now do that very easily here in the regular photo persona. We can also now take this same raw image over into our other personas. Of course, we'll go into the develop persona. That goes without saying. But we'll also now go into the lookify persona and into the tone mapping persona as well. So again, much more flexibility now with camera raw images. Now there are a few more things that are new. They're little, but they're very useful. Let's go over here, left-hand side, and we'll come down to our healing tools down here and the in-painting brush tool. I've shown how to use this in other videos. The important thing here is when you're using the in-painting brush, like any brush, you come up here and you make some adjustments on your opacity, your flow, hardness, all of these kind of things across the top to make it work as well as you want for your particular image. These settings are now memorized and they'll be set the same way the next time you use this tool. So it remembers the settings that you've previously used. And in most cases, it's probably a very good thing. You probably want to be using similar settings most of the time. You won't have to go up here and reset all of your options each time you use the tool. You will have those options saved and available the next time you open up the in-painting tool. Another little option, let's go over here to our marquees. This is the rectangular marquee right here. And on our marquees, we now have a from center option here for the rectangular marquee tool. We already have one for the elliptical marquee tool, but we now have one for the rectangular marquee tool as well. Again, very useful to do this and you then pull and it pulls the rectangle out from the center position. Again, very useful. Just to the right of that, we have anti-alias. This is now going to be selected by default. Previously, this was unselected by default. Now this is selected by default. And again, I think this is a good option. I always have mine selected anyway. That's my preferred way of working. So now it's going to be that way normally. So again, little thing, but I think it's going to be a very useful one as you're working in Affinity Photo. Let's do a fast mask on our picture here. Just get rid of from center and I'll pull a mask down like that. There we go. So here's our selection. Let's come down to our background layer. Let's convert that into a layer mask and control D to deselect. So here's our layer mask. Let's go over here to the background, right click on the mask. And in our pop-up menu, we now have two new options clear mask and fill mask. So again, it gives us a bit more flexibility here on how we work with our masks when we're using layer masks on one of our layers. Let's demonstrate that. I'll make a new mask right here. Here's our mask and control D to deselect. And then right click on the mask image itself, right click and down here, clear mask. What that does, as you can see right here on that thumbnail, is it is basically hide all. So it makes the whole mask black and it hides everything in there. Okay, control Z to back out of that. Let's right click and fill mask. And that makes the whole mask white, which is a show all. So clear and fill are hide all and show all. And one final new option, which I like a lot, is just go over here and grab the paintbrush. There we are, here's our paintbrush. And go over to the brushes panel right here. We have several different categories in here or collections. There's our basic clouds, dry media, engraving, and so forth. When you're inside one of these, some of these have a lot of brushes. Basic has a lot of brushes in here. You can see we have just a ton of things. We have round light brushes down here at different sizes. We have round soft brushes in here, regular round brushes up here. Let's say I wanted to find just the round soft brushes. We have a new search field right here. Just begin typing in. It's round, I'll put a space. I'll put in soft and it takes me down to the round soft brushes right there. So it's going to help you find your brushes in a large brush set by the name of the brush. Just begin typing it up here in the new search function for the brushes panel, and it will narrow down your search, make it much easier to find the specific brush that you're looking for. Now, if you want to learn a whole lot more about how to use Affinity Photo, I have a complete training course for this. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. If you found this video useful, why don't you give me a thumbs up on that? Just click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. I'm doing new videos frequently. And when you subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications when my new videos go up. And I'll see you next time.